Hi, everyone. I've uh, postponed this episode because it's just so difficult to talk about the prelude from the fifth suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. I like to tune my A string down, and I highly encourage everyone who's learning this piece to do so. Um, I learned this piece with the regular tuning, standard tuning, but the uh, uh, tuning down to G adds an enormous um, uh, variety, and uh, the resonance of the cello completely changes. Uh, not to mention that a few codes, chords are not possible without tuning down. When programming this piece on a, in a concert, try to either play it the first on the program or the last, or um, ending the first half, so you have enough time to tune and not have to go back and forth between tuning standard and uh, scordatura. Let's look at the beginning. This is basically a chord progression, uh, and there is an improvisation between the chords. So. At home, try to uh, find your own improvisation, and, and that will make it feel fresh. So, for example, now I'm not a great improviser. I hope you can come up with something a little better than I just did. Try to do that because this is basically what Bach did. This should feel like an improvisation. When we go back to what he wrote, um, it might feel a little better. So here uh, in the second bar, the tempo is more vertical. So in the beginning we have a more horizontal line. a little bit more freely. And here we have tempo. And this, uh, this C comes, comes back again and again. It's like a pedal point. Uh, if you look at my score, I marked it in red. Uh, it comes all the way back until the second uh, statement of the subject comes here in bar uh, 10. So we always come to, back to that C. It's like, I'm still here. And then here. And here again, I'd like to quote Rachel Podger, a wonderful Baroque violinist, who says that she thinks of um, a, a very keyboardish uh, passage here. So here we have a single note, unison, go, going to a third, and little by little the uh, interval grows. Uh, um, and you should feel that interval also growing. coming back. You might notice that I'm playing my dotted uh, eighth notes more dotted than are written and the short notes shorter. Um, this is Baroque practice. For example, here in bar three, you can play it in rhythm, it will still sound great. Uh, but then uh, a little bit of a shortening of those moving notes gives um, not only imp improvisatory impulse to the music, but um, uh, I think it moves it forward. Um, you don't want to get stuck. Here again, it's, uh, I don't like playing it very measured. It certainly is possible, but um, uh, it is more Baroque practice uh, to do a little shorter, to play a little shorter the 16th note, so... And here we have a gesture. So, not just... Uh, sounds a little boring, so... And, um, the 
those trills I also like to play with. So don't always uh, play them in one rhythm. Uh, as I like to say, trills have feelings too. I like to start the trill a little slower and then uh, end it a little before the actual note ends. So. <laughs> that um, to catch that low G you have to take a little time so slow your bow down and here we have to decide whether we want to crescendo into this uh, bar 12 Perhaps we had enough crescendo, uh, and then we want to use this opportunity to go down a little bit. If we are always um, so passionate, uh, we don't have the variety, and we have to always build our peaks and valleys. Um, so this can be a painful uh, chord. Also think about the middle voice here because it's go it goes on. So as you see the F in green, the F goes to the E flat and D. Uh, it's not the top voice, it's not the bottom voice that goes on. And for that reason, I like uh, elongating it a little uh, more than the top. So I leave it. You see how you can hear it alone. the notes marked in green they are uh, going step by step and again we have uh, another voice that's going step by step in red uh, F E flat to D. Not all notes are created equal um, in Bach, for sure. Think about how you are going to roll your chords. Um, it's not easy because here we have. Uh, um, I use one, two, three, one. So uh, it takes a while to bring that first finger to the A string. As you see here again, I start my trill a little slow and I end it uh, on the beat. So I don't keep it all the way. And that's also um, important in the Baroque. Uh, to take some time before you go back down to that C, uh, catching the gut string. Uh, I'm playing on, on modern strings, but uh, in Bach's time, everybody played on gut strings. So. so here we have E flat. I'm going to D on the top, the purple. Uh, marked in purple. Again. Um, um, so uh, when you study this piece, look at those uh, moving notes, moving uh, either t uh, tone by tone or half tone by half tone, and um, and see if you can connect the dots, so to speak. Um, Let's uh, go to the fugue now. If you look at the lute version, um, Bach ends in a minor key or major key, let's see. One of the interesting things about this suite is that we can see how Bach's mind works in terms of fingerings. We don't have fingerings for any of the other suites. Um, and here we can see when Bach preferred an open G to a closed G. So, and um, 
the last bar and sing. Oh, oh, on an open, uh, using open string for the G. And then when we start the 3 8 um, he uses a closed G. And then, and I think he wants that particular closed G so that he can contrast it with the beginning of the fugue. The beginning of the fugue is on the upbeat uh, of that measure. Uh, marked in red here. You might find it more satisfying to play. And then start on a closed string. Um, please don't play the same fingering though. Um, I think that's missing uh, the color change. Uh, so if you choose to play an open um, G, start with a closed start your fugue your fugue with a closed G and vice versa. Um, and I like to follow Bach's directions and uh, so uh, start the fugue with the open G. Now he marked for the lute très vite, which is very fast. Um, we don't have that, so he might not have wanted the cello to play too fast. The cello is not, uh, the response time of the strings is not as fast as a lute. Um, nevertheless, it's uh, interesting to keep this in mind and don't be too bogged down. Here we have again uh, two voices at least uh, one in red, and green, green. So here we have um, syncopation. Um, pa -pa -pa -da 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 -da. Um, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but so the rhythm is pam pam pam. Bring that syncopation out a little bit. Um, so very important to show those two two voices. Um, when you cadence, take a little time. It's natural, so... Again, syncopation. And a little time. And here we go uh, into a uh, more singing uh, phrase. Uh, so we're talking about bar 60. Two going into sixty-three. So, so we have a circle of fifths here. And I like to fill in the harmony here uh, with the lute part uh, when I practice only. Um, and here it is. <laughs> So this A and B flat um, kind of clarify the color of the F. Then we're talking about the downbeat of bar 67, 68, 60, uh, 70. So um, uh, I will start from a couple of bars before. <laughs> F it has that special color. Uh, here uh, you can experiment with uh, different color again. This um, A flat, uh, yeah, it has a different color than this is a more uh, open and happy. playing this uh, that is more Baroque-like. Uh, again, talking um, about the Baroque bow, which tapers towards the end, it's lighter at the end. And so if we're playing um, this in on the down a bow, which we do, um, it will naturally, the sound will naturally taper off. Uh, so you can add, you can add a little bit of uh, weight 
uh, and help the modern bow uh, create that uh, gesture. And again, we cadence here. It's a little time before we go on. And here you can start a little less. Um, there are a bunch of hemiolas um, looking at bar. 92. Mm. So on the page it looks one, two, or three, one, two, three, one. Uh, but in fact it is uh, one. All right. And the notes uh, marked in red are uh, the ones that should be a little heavier, in my opinion. Uh, by studying the Anna Magdalena slurs, um, you can see the polyrhythms uh, come into play here. Uh, so although you bring out the every four notes in the hemiola, the D, the B, and the G, we still feel the downbeat of the um, bar 93, and that's what creates that swing. Um, so as you heard, I, I also gave a little oomph to the D, to the downbeat of bar 93. Um, it is the play between uh, two and three that creates the swing of the hemiola. In bar 94, I've highlighted the scale going up, the scale that is broken by other 16th notes. Um, and here it is, it's uh, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, D, have um, again two voices so we have F E flat D E flat and the A is not as important uh, and then the important uh, voice jumps to the top of that figure uh, marked in red as I um, like to say uh, bring out what's changing not what's repeating um, so here the H stays the same so which is, it's not the A it's the G and here the E flat stays the same so you want to bring out the top voice and again the bottom voice is more interesting the top um, and those are again things that really make for a much richer performance um, also when you um, read through and analyze this piece uh, see if you can find every time that this first um, little motif of the fugue comes back it comes back many times and every time it is a little different in bar 137, we see a new beginning. So we have first A flat, and then G. Those are the, again, the thread. This is a thread that uh, keeps the longer line, and you should definitely keep it in mind. As you see, I highlighted it. It's uh, this voice that is moving in green, and yes, sometimes this voice is separated by a few bars. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's not there. Bar 150, pay attention to bring out the bottom and uh, play it a little closer to the bridge. <laughs> Um, and here, and, um, I bring out every four notes again, a hamiola, G, D, 
And as you can hear, I also uh, bring those gestures out. So when we have three notes under a slur, like in bar 159, I, I give it a little bit of um, uh, weight to the beginning of that slur, rather than playing them all uh, equally. Very interesting and important. Uh, um, remember to only use the open string when it's actually written uh, because uh, there is a crescendo written out uh, who says uh, Bach never wrote dynamics in those suites. He certainly did. He wrote them was through uh, using more separate slurs on higher register, for example, in the Anna Magdalena copy. Um, and uh, here, um, uh, look at the notes in red. So F, G, Is that bar 167 has a closed G, and it's only in uh, a few bars later, in bar 170, that we use the open G to indicate the top of that phrase. <laughs> I like reversing the slurs so that, again, uh, we create uh, different colors, and it's not always G, G, G on the down bow, but once in a while we can use an up bow. Uh, this also creates a longer line. So... And the up bow here. And in my opinion, uh, having those two bars 174 and 175 on the up bow creates uh, a more tension and a stronger feel when we finally uh, get to the restatement of the subject in 176. This is it for today. I hope I gave you some food for thoughts. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.